In this video, part of our series on hurricanes, I'm going to show you the top ways to keep from getting kicked off a hurricane, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so you'll never miss a video. And thanks to Elizabeth from YouTube who says, hail yes. Thank you for yet another great video full of awesome intel. And thank you so much for watching, Elizabeth. But before we jump into this video, I want to quickly tell you about an incredible service called Schedule It. With Schedule It, you can route your claims, build your schedule based on parameters you set, contact your insurance, and this is a huge one for me, update your activity diary automatically. That's on all major IA estimating platforms. Setting up and calling your new claims, especially on a big hurricane event, takes at least a full day. A day you could be out in the field closing claims and getting checks into insurance hands. Improve your cycle time, improve your customer service metrics, and earn more money faster on CAT with Schedule It. Getting kicked off a storm? Is that even a thing? Yes. It absolutely is, and here's how it happens. An adjuster fails for some reason. Maybe they keep getting asked to make corrections and they keep not doing them, whatever. The IA firm will just stop giving them claims. They may say, hey, thanks for coming out. Go ahead and finish up what you have and have a safe trip home. Or they may not say anything and the adjuster will just stop receiving new claims. So he won't be receiving a paycheck anymore, so it'll just work itself out naturally. So what are the ways that an adjuster can fail and either A, stop receiving new claims and be effectively let go from the storm, or worse, B, have all their claims taken away and given to another adjuster? Number one, not closing claims fast. We are there to help the carrier close a large number of storm claims quickly so that their customers aren't sitting around waiting to get their claims resolved. We have to maintain high quality, of course, but there is no reward for being slow. Number two, scoping and scoping and scoping like mad with the intention of taking a week and writing them all up. This sounds good in theory, and there's a certain attractive logic to it, right? Just get out there all day from dawn to dusk and climb roofs like there's no tomorrow. Then spend several days or a week or more in your PJs in the cool air conditioning of your hotel room. Or heck, why not just go home and do it? It's only a few hours away and you'll be able to save a bunch of money on your hotel and meals out and even sleep in your own bed. It's seductive for sure, but this, probably more than any other single thing I'm going to talk about today, will get you in the most trouble. So what's wrong with running claims this way? Well, let me count the ways. If weeks into a storm, you suddenly turn in 40 claims, there's pretty much a guarantee you'll have made the same mistakes on every single one of those claims. The file reviewers will quickly see that you've made the same mistakes on all your claims and they'll likely call your manager to let them know that you're causing a bottleneck in the file review queue. Your manager will see that you're only just now turning in claims that you inspected 13 days ago and that they've all got major mistakes in them and he or she will be on the phone so fast to you that your head will spin. And even if you don't get any phone calls, now you're gonna have to reopen all of those claims and correct them, which will take you all of another day or a very late night. Another reason is this. You'll likely be writing your estimates from your photos and a crinkled up and sweat stained scope sheet from two weeks ago. If you didn't really know what you were doing and you didn't take good photos, your estimates are going to suck. Long story short, you're going to miss damage and what you do write for will be inaccurate, which will affect not only you, but the desk adjuster or other field adjuster who has to clean up the mess you've made on the claim. Insurance are gonna be cranky with you because it's been weeks since you were at their house. You won't have high credibility with cranky people and they will resist you at every single turn and your customer service numbers will be in the basement. Number three, you have a bunch of tree claims that are just waiting on tree bills. If you've been on cat before, you know that tree guys will go out for weeks cutting trees off of properties many times deep into the night. Unless they are sophisticated pro operations with an office full of administrative people, they're not gonna get to writing out invoices for anybody until things start to slow down for them, which means that your tree bill claims will be sitting on your desk waiting and waiting and waiting. Just write it up. And later, when the tree guy finally gets around to invoicing everybody, if it's more, you can work it out then. 
Don't let claims sit around waiting for tree bills when you can estimate it yourself. In fact, that's your job. Most things you can write your own estimate for, including, but certainly not limited to, electrical and plumbing repairs, driveway repairs, and patio covers. Trees are no different. So what things can't you write for? Things that you can't tell are damaged or not. For example, my dishwasher makes a weird sound since the hailstorm. They'll have to have Sears or somebody come out and take a look and provide their professional opinion on what's wrong with it, what caused it to break, and how much it will be to repair or replace it. And you don't wait for these reports. You let the insured take their time to get somebody out to take a look at that. You make a note in the file stating that there could be damage to this appliance and that the insured was instructed to get a cause of loss and repairability report from a professional service or technician. Don't wait for these because it could be weeks or months before the insured gets around to doing that. The only thing you should be waiting on is going to be an ITEL report and those usually turn around in 24 to 48 hours. Number four, not addressing all corrections you've been asked to do or arguing with the file reviewers. If you're asked to correct five things by a file reviewer, please, for the love of all that is holy, correct those five things. I'll never understand why when I'm doing a file review, an adjuster will correct the first thing and then send the file back up. If I have to send the file back five times for you to correct the five things I asked for when I send it back the first time, your manager is going to hear about it. Listen, we get it. You know everything that there is to know about everything and the file reviewer is an idiot, of course. If you don't agree with a correction that a file reviewer has asked for, you can send clarification to them. If they hold the line on the correction, call your manager and explain what you're trying to do and why you've deviated from the estimating guidelines on this claim. Let your manager make the final call. Don't be a poison pen pal and send nasty grams to the file reviewers calling them names or telling your manager that the file reviewers are a bunch of idiots. You have to understand that most of the time the file reviewers are going through dozens of claims a day, checking that your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. They don't have the authority to put something through that violates the rules the carrier has set down for us. Take it up the chain if you have a situation that you think needs to deviate from the rules. The bottom line on this is if you are difficult to work with and you create extra work for the people who are trying to help you get your claims through, you're not going to last long. Just because we're independent doesn't mean that we also don't have a team there for us. Be there for your team and strive to not make extra work for people and you will go far, I promise. Number five, failing to adapt. The essence of a huge chaotic cat deployment is time management, without a doubt. If you can't get organized in every way, you're not going to last long. There will be so much coming at you all day long in phone calls, emails, inspections, and estimates, and so on, that if you don't know how to prioritize and manage your time, it will be a miracle if you manage to stay on the storm. And this right here is the number one reason that people will turn back in all of their claims and go home. The amount of overwhelm new adjusters feel on their first storm deployments is staggering, even if it's not a big hurricane. And you guys know I'm all about time management as the IA skill set to rule all other skills. And coming up very soon, I will announce a new free training that goes deep on the critical skills you need to have nailed in order to be successful on your first big storm deployment, whether it's a hailstorm, a winter storm, or a hurricane. You can sign up for more information on all my upcoming trainings at adjustertv.com. Okay, question of the day. Are you interested in seeing videos about how to cook tasty, super easy meals in your hotel room while on cat? Let me know in the comments where you're watching this video. For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.